Hey coach, so excited you found us on YouTube. I'm, I'm very excited. Um, I got my Dr. Dish there, but I'm in my happy place in my gym. Um, I'm so happy that you found us. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit the little bell up above so you get notifications. We're here to help. We put content out every day because we wanna give back to this great game. If you're looking to take your coaching to the next level, if you're looking to go from here to here, um, let us help you out. We can do that over at teachhoops.com for coaches who wanna get better. Let me help you put some pictures on the wall, some of those state championships. Um, so go over and check it out and let's head off to the video. All right, welcome to Coach Unplugged. Um, I'm not even going to try to guess which episode this will be, Coach. It will be less than a 1,000. I'm, I'm at like six, 700 at this point. But, um, Coach, I'm going to have you, Coach, I'm going to have you introduce yourself, um, kind of tell the listeners or the people that are watching this kind of your basketball journey, uh, where you started and kind of where we got to the, to the point. So I'll turn it over to you. It's not really early morning, but I'll turn it over to you. I'll take my coffee out and we'll listen and then we'll dive into talking about building a program sure well my name is Heath Neal I'm the head girls coach at Pea Ridge High School in Pea Ridge Arkansas it's just we call it the the Walmart North we're just about five miles outside of Walmart headquarters and so okay uh, so so okay so this is what I said we always I always have a pre-interview we just talk for five minutes probably before. yeah so how, how big is the headquarters of Walmart uh currently it's huge they're building a whole brand new home office and so which is really going to be closer to us right so, what are we talking like, are we talking like five thousand people are we talking like how well, many i mean how, how much is it does it take up a small city it's got to be huge it's huge yeah it's huge i mean uh if you look at northwest arkansas you got kind of like we call it the quad city you got fayetteville springdale rogers benville yep. fayetteville springdale real close to each other that's where the university of arkansas is yep and then um, Rogers and Benville are real close to each other. And Benville, okay. Benville has been the growth of Northwest Arkansas completely because of Walmart, okay. the Walmart family. And so, I mean, you can imagine we have international live here to come all the way to Northwest Arkansas. Oh, it's got to be crazy. It's, like the Arkansas too. I mean, that's it, crazy. Since yeah. I was a kid, since I was a kid, I mean, we've, we've seen this thing just explode. Um, you, what I saw when I was five, six, seven years old is not what it is today. Right. And, and now, you know, I'm 35 now. And so they're, they're building this brand new, um, home office. That's no telling. How okay. So talk, talk about getting off trail, but we're going to get off trail for a second. <laughs> so two couple things about Walmart. First of all, like we have Epic, which is, um, one of the largest, um, uh, companies, it's an, it's a company that basically does your, um, your health records. They're the largest ones mm -hmm. and they built in a suburb of Madison. And it's like, Oh my God, it's, it takes over. It's a billion dollar company. When one of those comes in, it takes over. It's crazy. Sure. Um, so how has that affected sports? That's why, that's why I'm saying I'm going to get off trail a little bit. Oh. But how that's had to have brought people into the community. All, all around Northwest Arkansas. I yeah. Mean, just, not just in our school district to put it in relevancy for our school district, like, Bentonville, where Bentonville High School is, and I, my, one of my mentors was a head coach there for a long time, and he actually coached, his name is Jason McMahon, he actually coached um, Malik Monk, who plays for the Charlotte Hornets right now, and, yep. and so um, played at Kentucky for John Calipari, and um, anyways, he, at that size, school is a, a 7A classification, which is the highest classification we have in Arkansas. Okay. P. Ridge, 10 years ago, was a uh, 3A classification. So give me numbers, 7A is like a couple thousand? Uh, seven a uh, seven a like class size like school size school size their high their high school is probably a couple thousand just okay their high school. okay and so like our high school back ten years ago was probably about four hundred okay and so now if if you look by the triple A standards of Arkansas well they're at seven a and just in ten years we've gone from three a and we're entering into five a classification next whoa year. and so it's, oh. that's the impact of Walmart. For yeah, sure. I mean the growing. I mean, the, the how do the, the schools must be bursting? It's it's. I mean, we're building a high school currently. Uh, we're excited because we're we got a brand new arena coming with that. So our basketball staffs fired up and our community's fired up because the things also we've been doing. But right, um, that's that's what comes with growth. Um, and that's the thing. It's like right now, Bentonville and and some suburb cities outside of Bentonville towns um, don't have the property that we do. So that's where they're all coming. 
right? Uh, so, so there's always growing pains too. We can talk about that in a second. So go, we'll, we'll get back on trail. So keep talking about your journey here a little bit. So, sure. so where I'm you started. Fifth, and, yeah. I'm, I'm entering my fifth year as the head girls coach. So this is my fifth year. I spent three years as the head junior high boys coach under our boys coach currently. And his name's Trent Lloyd. Um, learned a lot from him. Um, my journey to basically where I'm at, there's a lot of people and, and uh, obviously mentors that I had along the way to get to where I'm at. One's my father. Um, my father now is a superintendent, fixing to retire in school business, was a longtime coach for 18 years in our state. Um, and so I grew up in the gym. Um, <laughs> that sounds, I grew like, up my, a coach sounds at, like my son. Yeah, it sounds yeah, like my son. A, I think a, you... a, gym, a gym rat, a coach's kid. Um, I got to watch, you know, I wasn't the one that just sit there and played in the gym. I sit on the end of the bench and watch my dad and, and, uh, watch good coaches around my dad. Right. And, um, fast forward, um, my dad, my sophomore year takes a minute, his first administrative job. And, um, so he got out of coaching and then I learned how to, um, I guess look upon other coaches other than who I was playing, uh, who I was playing for. Right. So I, I got to learn from some other coaches that I played for, whether that be AAU or, or high school. Um, and then after college or after high school, I went to college for a year, really struggled um, academically. I was, I felt like I was mature enough socially, but um, not so much academically end up joining the service. So that's, that's interesting. So do you think if you'd have taken a year off, that would have helped? No, I don't think I'd have made it through. Okay. I don't think just knowing myself, I don't think I would be here today without my military background. Um, okay. And uh, I think my attention to detail and stuff like that, that I use in, in here in, in my everyday job, I've got to test that to what I learned in the service. Spent five years in the Navy, traveled all the way around the world. Um, and I was 19 to got out when I was 24. So what were you, what were you on an aircraft carrier? Were you on? I was. I was my first three years. I was on an aircraft carrier called USS Kitty Hawk, I was stationed out of Yokosuka, Japan. So I lived in Japan. I know for three the Kitty years. Hawk. I've seen and, the uh, Kitty Hawk. That's yeah, it was it was the oldest at the time. Trip. It was the oldest carrier in the Navy, and yeah. um, we decommissioned it, so we retired it. And then my last this is this is where everybody I blow everybody's mind is my last two years in the service. I actually took a job. It was an Army billet, but I actually took a job and I worked down in Guantanamo Bay. And so I did hands-on detention operations with detainees that we had captured back from you know Iraq Afghanistan all in, in our conflict. so okay so a couple of things first of all living on an aircraft carrier right now is like I, I'm not guessing they're just not letting them come home yeah. <laughs> I mean you're looking at living at 5,000 um, 5,000 people when you're underway and then uh, right it, it's the size of three football fields so right the only the only issue is if you let them out like if they just stay in the aircraft carrier no one's going to get COVID like you know, no <laughs> yeah. one's going to get it if they don't leave yeah um, that's true. so uh so okay so Guantanamo were you a, did you have to stay you always you couldn't leave the base did you leave the base well the base uh the base is huge it's like 56 square miles Ooh, um, so that's it's, big it's, you got both sides of the bay um if you look at the map you got two sides you got windward side and leeward side um the 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 detention camp was on one side. Now you had to have um, specific clearances to get to the detention camp, but you also had the regular base side. Um, so it was like a, a 10, 15 minute drive to work to where the base was or to the camps were. were so our family is living there then? Oh, there's a high school down there. Yeah, there's a high there's a military high school down there. Um, there I mean, there's, so there's, there's, there's schools for military. Okay. Um, and so then they, they're doing, I mean, we've had the base, I think, you know, I think it's a cool story if you ever did research on Cuba or military base. Yeah. We've had that since the 1800s. And I think the, the story behind that is we actually leased it from the, the um, Cuban government for like $1,200 a year back in the 1800s. And so after Fidel Castro took over and we stopped relationships after the Cuban Missile Crisis, um, Fidel stopped cashing checks every year. So since the 60s, that base has technically been free. They hadn't paid for anything on and having that property because Fidel back in the day cut ties with right. the government. So, so, so um, the weather's really nice. Humid, humid. It's, humid. it's like very, Miami. It's kind of like a desert a little bit down there. So as well, very humid. Um, it is nice. I mean, it's it's like you know your Caribbean style. I mean, the so, water so yeah, that's, that's that's what I think Cuba's hope is that. Um, 
it becomes a tourist it eventually becomes a tourist attraction it was in the 50s and 40s yeah when i was there we still didn't have those we still had travel restrictions there yeah um, but i could easily see how they could allow like we never you weren't ever allowed to go into cuban territory right um you know we would joke when we go fishing in the guantanamo river you'd come up to a bridge about three or four miles up the river and it'd be like, if you go past this bridge, you're going to jail. Right. And so, you know, like the government, the Cuban government's going to take you over and you're probably in big trouble. So, um, but it, it was huge. I mean, it's just, there was so much to, for, for military people to do on base and um, outside of what we probably do in the States, but right. Uh, as part of the job so yeah so i think yeah eventually i think that i think tourism could be the solution to 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 to, to cuba at some point um okay so then you came back from there and came then back what? from there went to the university of arkansas um got lucky enough to work on the uh, student athletic training side uh for bobby petrino staff at arkansas when we were back okay. when football was relevant at the yeah. university of arkansas okay touche um, touche yeah. 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 we uh we had some fall off since the motorcycle accident but uh, yeah there's that i'm telling you i don't think there's going to be fall football yeah uh, who knows i don't i i don't i mean i don't know how much like camp randall where the badgers play wisconsin plays holds 75 80 000 people you can't put eighty thousand people in a stadium no, like I don't. it's there's gonna be it's it, it's to be seen, I guess. They're going to figure out a, some type of way to sell tickets, too. Because, yeah, it's, and that's the thing is like, this is all money driven. This is decisions will be made because of the dollar bill. So. The dollar bill, that's true. Yeah. So, okay, so you came back and then you were in Arkansas. Yeah, I was at Arkansas. Football was, football so. was fo we've, we've, we've come to the conclusion football is better then. Okay. No, <laughs> not necessarily. I mean, I've yeah. always been a basketball guy. Now, I played as an athlete, a student athlete, I played multiple sports. Right. But I've always, and I think, you know, I think if you talk to a lot of coaches, I've learned a lot from football coaches. And I use a lot from football coaches in our in practice, you know, time and score, um, periods. There's a lot of things. that we Because they're still, hurting cats. That's oh, what I tell people. Yeah, football exactly. coaches hurt cats because it's like you put 70 guys out there, you you're sure. not organized, you're in trouble. Like, and that's yeah. a whole other conversation because I can tell you how I align my staff, you know, my how they got position coaches in football and they right. – I mean, we do a lot of things and that correlate with how football coaches run practice and stuff. But anyways, so I learned a lot from there. And then uh, my last year, I interned for Jason McMahon at Bentonville. Jason's first head job as a junior high coach, like right out of got right out of college, I was his first class as a freshman. And so we okay. built that relationship, player-coach relationship, and I always had a tremendous respect for him. And then I had the opportunity to come back when he made it big. He won two state title or won a state title and then got a runner-up in Arkansas at the school in which I played for him at as he moved up and uh, to be a head coach. And then um, uh, got a huge opportunity to go work for Bentonville High School, which was a, a classification above where he was at currently. Takes over that program. It was just a subpar program at the time and elevates it into, you know, what it is today. And um, and so, and then had players like Malik and and some other players like Nick Smith who played at Belmont. I mean, some good, good players. Good players. Through. Yeah. Good players come through. And, and so, um, got the opportunity to work for him. And then eight miles up the road, we were looking after I graduated college, you know, we were looking for jobs. And what'd you great? What was your major in college? I, I, I majored in K-12 Kines. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I had a minor in history, um, just in case I had to teach history. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, there's, luckily, uh, yeah that, there's kind of a demand for history teachers. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Well, if, if you don't do anything else, you you limit yourself on on certifications. And oh yeah, you can't. You can't. You definitely can't do that. Yeah. yeah. But so P Ridge job came open for a junior high job, and uh, had the opportunity to transition just eight miles north, and um, work for a guy who's his. It was his first year as head coach, and Trent Lloyd and his dad has been a. 35 year head coach in Arkansas, well respected in the same classification that Bentonville was in. Um, and so I got to work for him and we became best friends. Um, phenomenal X's and O's guys, one of the best, one of the best X's and O's guys I've ever seen at a young age. I mean, he took over a job at 27. Um, and to what he is today in eight years of being a head coach is, uh, is impressive. I think um, you could have another segment just on X's and O's and set plays with him. He's really good. But I learned a lot from him, although, you know, we all have our – And where is, he, where is he located? He's, he's our head boys coach here at Pea Ridge. Okay. 
I'm gonna write it down. I'm always looking for. Okay, go keep going. Keep going. Yeah. So, um, so I spent three years under him. Had some had a lot of success. We had a lot of really good teams during that three years in junior high. And then the team that I started out with in junior high, by the time when they were seniors, went to the state finals. Um, got got beat out by um, Arkansas Baptist. Was really good. Had a kid that went to Kansas, um, and then has a kid has a seven foot three kid that's at, at uh, Arkansas right now currently and. And so had a really good team that year, and then um, had some uh, had some turnover in the girls program. And the girls program at the time, I think, was in a period of um, needed a spark, needed a new sense of energy, um, was struggling, I would say. And so sometimes it just needs a new face. It's nothing against the old coach. Sometimes no, absolutely not. The old coach is a legend here. Um, yeah. And, yeah, and had been an AD and does a phenomenal job. I learned a lot from him just in the three years that I was. My dad coached against him. I watched him when I was a young kid. I played against him, um, and 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 he, so well, so much well respected from the kids as well. But um, you know, when we took over, that was always a challenge too. Is like, hey, how do you get buy in? Because I'm already in district, right? And and creating this new culture and new environment and how to do things differently. It's not that he was doing things or I was doing things better than one another. It's just a different way of learning, and. Um, you know, we wanted to make it popular because everything at the time after my first three was all about the boys program. Everything at the time was the boys are really successful and the girls weren't at the right. time. And, and we wanted to be relevant. We wanted to be, we wanted to be co and, and, but we had to work hard to get there and we had to do the right things all the time to get there. We couldn't just hope it happened. And so we had to do a lot of teaching and how to get them there. And, we had a plan. We had a vision that was kind and of. I think that I think that's perfect. I think that's a perfect lead into what we're going to talk about with you and your program. So why don't you share the screen? That's a perfect lead. Sure. Um, and that's a difficult thing for for young coaches. First of all, I've been coaching for thirty years too, and I and I'll just keep talking as you're getting stuff ready here. But um, it's hard to know when to walk out the door because I don't want to kick. I don't want. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to get kicked out the door. Um, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, it, there's a fine line between when to leave and when not to leave. I, it's it's one of those questions I always ask myself. But um, yeah. go ahead, coach. So go ahead. You're going to talk about building a program, and then yeah. I'll just jump so in and, and say some we, stuff here. When we took over, we had to have a vision and a plan and what our identity was going to be, and we had to create buy-in within the kids. And um, one of the things that we felt like was important is um, all the things that we're going to go over here and, and I wanted to put it in a set in a, in a slideshow in which, um, you know, what we did as a staff, I, I got lucky. I got to hire, um, I got to hire one my first year. He ended up being my um, seventh grade coach. And um, over the la over my second year, I had a coach transition. We moved him up to my main assistant, but we built this, you know, we built a great staff around us, and I think that's huge. And we'll talk about that in just a second. But that's that's really huge, and it's <laughs> but, also huge for young for young coaches that are listening. Is that when you get a job, these are questions you should ask during that interview process. And and do I get that? Do I get to hire my staff or not hire my staff? I mean, those are some questions to think about when you're when you're sure. taking a job. You know, but tread lightly on that because you know at the time. At the time, I'm a head junior high coach. And so I'm interviewing against guys that have head coaching experience. Right. And so what's going to set me apart from these guys? I know that they've, they've been interviewing me for the last 36 months. They know what I'm capable of. They understand my work ethic. They know um, that I'm possibly an up-and-comer. But I've never done it before where some of these other male or female coaches who have had coaching experience that interviewed against me had. Right, and, and I think that's another good point there you made with the young coaches, is you are being interviewed every day. Like, when you're in a program, you're, I mean, especially if you're trying to take over a program, that's important, um, because you're being interviewed every day. Um, you know, that, that you know, well, and, and, the, and you can't get over the hurdle of not having head coaching experience. We've all, you and, we've all been in that boat where you're sitting across the table and it's like, well, I can't get head coaching experience unless someone gives me a chance. Um, for sure. you know so I think that's an important thing go ahead coach. I think that's a whole nother topic too because yeah. when I interviewed and I knew what you know I knew the hurdles that I had and I, I had gone I had looked at other head jobs um, before and I've been in the running and been in the top three to some other head jobs on the boys side um, and, and then when we transitioned over to the girls 
um, I had this great opportunity. I was ready to be a head coach. I didn't really care what gender. Um, hey, it's basketball. Basketball's ball. In some yeah. sense, I could argue that women's are the purest form. <laughs> so, I could too. Um, but uh, one of the things that I think is important that young coaches need to hear is that when you go up against experience, you that's the white elephant in the room. You can't you can't overcome it yourself. So what I try to do is attack it head on and 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 during the interview process and, and let that be known. So I tried to I tried to uh basically put a I put a slideshow on. It was funny. I said, you know, I, I defined experience. What is the definition of experience? Right. Well, if you looked at my background and my history, I, I had been growing up through the game my whole life. I right. had I had led people in the military um, as a work center supervisor. And, right. and, and so I had been a leader in different form or fashions other than leading teams. And, and technically I was a head junior high coach. So I had led a team before. Um, so, you, so I, yes, you make a negative into a positive. And the sure. thing is, I think um, that you, you have to sell, it's like, it's like um, Washington outsiders. If you're a politician and you want to go to Washington, you basically say, look, I'm just a teacher and I live in Wisconsin and I'm going to bring new, it's, it's the same thing when you're looking like, well, I'm going to be different than the coach that's already done it. I'm going to, you know, be here 12 hours a day and blah, blah, blah. You have to, you have to make a strength into or weakness into a strength, I think is, sure. is that twist. But yeah, I, I love the idea of saying, here's what experience is because experience doesn't have to necessarily be standing on that sideline either. I love that. I, that that's a great golden nugget for, for and I took, coaches. I took, the funny thing is, is I took, you know, I was, let's see, I was, 30 I was 30 at the time and I took um so youth is an issue too because yeah, I remember they, my first one that I got turned down I know they looked at me and goes he's too young I know yep. they did yep and that happens that yep. happens yep. and our head voice coach at the time when I when I first got a job under him he was 27 right and um and and he had been two years as he, he basically rolled up the position that he was hiring for he rolled up from that position so they moved up a junior high coach into the head coach. So I knew that they had done it before. Um, and I think they, I think they hired the best candidate, 100%, no doubt. I mean, I, right. I do think they got, got it right with the boys program. But at the, at the time, I felt like I've got, to, I've got to hit my age and I've got to hit my experience in the interview process. And so I had a, a common theme and I put some of the best coaches in our area or in our state and I put all of their accolades on there. And then I put – at what age they became a head coach. And, you know, most of the time, like Brian Ross at Little Rock Baptist, or, or Arkansas Baptist was, was 29 when he became a head coach. And he's a three-time state title winner. And then my mentor, he, he, was, he was 28 when he became a head coach. He's a, he's a one t a state title winner, two runner-up. And then I, I referenced our boys coach. And I tried to attack that because every one of those common theme people needed their first opportunity. And that's they all did. I needed. I was late twenties, early thirties. I mean, when I got mine and it's like, I think I, I actually think that's a perfect window to be honest with you. Like that late twenties, early thirties is from a hiring standpoint. Um, Cause I definitely in my, in my fifties do not have the energy I had in my thirties. <laughs> <laughs> I feel the same way at 35 some days, but I mean, we, we, we you, you, it. you wait, you wait. It definitely <laughs> like, and, I, and I'm like, if anybody ever, I mean, if you saw me, like I have to go for two walks a day right now to get the number of steps I got when I was teaching. So yeah. I, like I have to get like 12, 13,000 steps. I got to go for two walks with my dogs because <laughs> that's how much movement I have. So people aren't saying Collins is like, but I don't feel that. Like I don't feel the energy I had in my thirties. So I think that's gotta be a selling point too, but go ahead coach. Back to the identity. Um, yeah, we we wanted to build this identity and brand around girls basketball that was equivalent to the success that the boys program had, but also uh, to to rally um, our community behind because our community rallied around because we're winning. Obviously, winning cures a lot of things in boys, um, but we wanted to rally the community even more around both programs, and that was like a personal mission for for me. You know, I felt like you know. One, we had to earn it. Two, we had to put a product out there that our community would be proud of and, um, and, and enjoy watching. I think that's important. It's marketing. There's mar it's marketing. Guaranteed, 100%. Yeah. So what we did was for our kids, it started with our core values. And this goes from my staff 
This goes all the way down to our, our, our seventh grade program. We actually extend this down for our youth league coaches as well. But our core values are simple. These are anything you have in a value system. This is the military in me, by the way, is, uh, um, is, is the most important things that we stand on. These are our pillars. Um, and we felt, we felt like truth, trust, being together, everything we do is together, having high, high integrity. And then, you know, we extend those four um, to our parents. When we do our parent meeting, we extend those four. So like those four for our parents, when you have parent meetings, those are important. One, they got to one. They got to know that we're all going to be truthful to each other. You got to trust me. I've got to trust you. You know, we got to be together in this for the for the kid. And then we all got to have high integrity during this process. And so we're laying the groundwork for not only our players but our whole everybody that's involved in our program, whether those are the, the extended branches. And then a uh, big one for me is we want to be competitive. Um, and so I think through the uh, maturation and the process. Of, of our four years here at Pea Ridge um, in the girls program, we had to learn how to compete. We had to learn how to freaking love to win and hate to lose. Yeah. And, and, and we had to do that all the time. And we would compete, not even in sports stuff. And we would try to compete in the classroom and we would, we would compete. And when we would have a barbecue or whatever, a team outing, and we would compete in, in games. And we're trying to drive home this sense of, gosh, I hate losing. I hate losing. It's not fun. We got to find out ways to win. And then we wanted it to be a players program. And what I mean by that, some coaches probably cringe when they hear that because we're control freaks by nature. But we want it to be rather than having I could draw up any X's and O's, anything to get them in the right places. But they, if they don't have confidence doing it, it's irrelevant. And so we wanted them to have confidence and ownership and buy into what we did as a unit. I thought that was an important value for us. And the last thing, we want to do it full speed, have high intensity and maximum effort. And that's sitting in that poster right there, sitting as it's a banner or a, not a banner. It's a, um, I call it I know, like it's almost looks like a chalkboard kind of thing. It's, it's, it's a, me, it's, it's 10, but it's a, it's a, it's a sign. It's, it's what a it big is. sign. It's, it's sign. like, so, and so uh, question. So people listening, so there's seven of them. And again, all this stuff I'll put in the show notes. So people that are listening, are driving their cars or working yeah. or doing whatever they're doing when they go listen to a podcast. Um, it's not as big a deal on the YouTube because they can see it. Uh, yeah. But anyway, um, how did you come up with the core values? Because people always ask me that. How, how do you come up with your pillars or your core values? I think one, it's, it's my own personal things of how I live my life. Um, like I said, I, I took some stuff from the military. Like in the military, we have core values. Um, you know, and so it's how we, we were supposed to act. Um, it goes back to some of the golden rule things. Um, obviously, I stole. I, my mentor used some of these. and, and uh, Coaches are great thieves, so it's okay. Uh, like, no 100%. coach is ever going to get mad if you steal their pillars. or their, if, if, No if one's going to care. I don't, you, yeah, you can, you can steal every one of my out-of-bounds plays. I don't care. <laughs> I mean, I got them from someone else. Like, yep. it's like, that's just what it is. It's about sharing. I agree. Yeah. I agree. And, it, and it's about what fits you. And yeah. what it's your, I mean, if it didn't fit me personally, I wouldn't be putting it down. If I didn't believe in it, you can't, you can't put something there that gives false belief because your kids will call you out on that. And I think that's, I think that's extremely important because yeah, you can't BS a BSer. So no. most kids are BSers. So you can't do that. They'll, they, kids are very, their, their meter on reading you is very, very good from someone that's coached a long time. Yeah. Um, one of the things I always tell my guys is I will never lie to you. Like, I will never lie to you. I will not come in this locker room and tell you the team we're playing is the best team ever, and you all know they're horrible. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to be honest, and then I'm going to talk about how we can attack, tackle it after that. Mm -hmm. They respect that. They want honesty. They For don't sure. always, like um, – they want, they want to know the truth. Uh, it's hard sometimes to hear it, but they want it. Very much so. I mean, and you do your player meetings and stuff like that, and, and you're, you're truthful with these kids, and they do. They want it. Um, sometimes they don't want it fully, but they want it. Um, and sometimes they don't appreciate it until five years later. But true. eventually, it, it mo for most of them, it, it hits. True. So keep, keep going. We're, we're, we're building a brand. We're building an identity. We've got to make it popular. Um, we've got to make it where not only that um, – you know, our kids are excited about it, but it, this extends down farther than just my high school program. And so what you see here on the, on the screen is some of the things, this is just a very small uh, 
clip of what we did, but we got new practice gear. They didn't have practice gear for a long time, maybe four or five years. We got new game gear. We got new practice gear for junior high. We got travel bags. We, you know, we, we wanted our kids to be fired up to come to athletics and basketball at the end of the day. You know, also, so, so, so one of my first things when I got the job is a couple things. When I got my first job, I went into the ADS and said, we're buying new uniforms. He goes, we don't need uniforms. I go, yeah, we do. It's mm-hmm. like going to work. When you put a tie on, for a guy, mm-hmm. when you put a tie on and a suit on, you feel different than when you're in your T-shirt and your shorts. Yep. I need to make them feel proud of what they are because this program hasn't won. That was the first thing. The second thing is how many kids do you keep on your roster normally? Mm-hmm. How many are kids you do you keep on your roster? Uh, you asking me? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so right now, uh, I don't do cuts in high school. We're not, we haven't had the number where I've had to. Okay. Um, do you and, total, do you, the point is, are you getting, do you usually have, because I want to talk about the practice gear, do you normally have two groups, like an a, a black and a red? Or, so we have, we have a, and during practice, I do segregate um, a black, white team. Two, uh, two, two, two groups, not three. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, okay. Uh, I can, I have the capability to do that, um, but we usually don't go that deep, no sir. You don't usually go that deep, okay. So that's why, you know, some, especially some of the youth coaches won't necessarily have it's it's nice to have two different colors just for mm-hmm. me for me um i just found out that there's actually a company that makes three colors they called triversables well which, this is a this is, is a crazy. big thing for this is a big thing that we did because when i transitioned over from male to female obviously there's a there's not a learning curve but there's some things that i've got to do differently than i did with male program and so one of the things that we did when we bought all these practice gear and to have the possibility to go to three groups is I make it mandatory for our kids to wear undershirts under their practice gear. So they have a compression shirt and we'll go a different color in which our practice gear is. So if they go into their compression shirt, it's just a, it's a, it's a barrier for us coaches because we we're male staff one. And so like, you know, when we flip over to a different color, there's no wasted practice time. We don't have to go in the locker room to do it. Um, we flip over, we have a color there. If I want them in white or black from there, we can go, we can do that. But we have the capability to go three colors just because the undershirt. Yeah. And that's nice. And, and, and that transition too, cause I've been the two, the two kind of themes for podcasts I've been doing for the last like three weeks are building a program and practice planning and they, they're, they're correlated, but the practice planning part is what you're talking about is that transition. That's a hard thing for young coaches. And you just saved an hour over a season probably on that transition from changing colors. If the, yeah. the, the faster you can do that, the more concise you can be in your teaching. So I love that. I love the undershirt thing. I've never thought of that. That's a great idea. And, and it protects, it protects male coaches. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. But even for me, I could do that for me. You know, we're green and white. I yes. could put a black yeah. undershirt. Boom, we're set. There's our three yeah. colors. Let's for go. Sure. Like, you know. Um, yeah. and the time we could save and I'm, you know, again, saving money as well. It's a lot yeah. cheaper. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a lot cheaper. Too. So anyways, this is, this is some, just a, a snippet of what we did for our kids and that, and you can see on their face. I mean, they're fired up. They're excited. They're, they, they're happy to have all that stuff. Um, and, and our seventh graders in our, in our, in our youth league programs, when they come to the games on Tuesdays and Friday nights, they get to see that and they want to, you know, and that's what, that's what we wanted. We wanted them to go, Hey, I want to be a part of that. That's, that stuff looks awesome. I want that. And, yep. and then we get to dive in and go, well, here's how you, here's how you do that. Right. <laughs> and, uh, so um, one of the things we do, and these are in our locker rooms is we, we weigh everything off of pyramids. We, we have pyramids of success and I'm sure you've seen this um, different versions of pyramids of success. Yeah, it's a John, Wood, it's a John Wooden thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Big, big John Wooden fan when it comes to all this. Um, I'm going to start on the one on the right. Okay. No, I'll start on the one on the left. Obviously, uh, you know, we talk about character, having high, high character, attention to the details, and then um, you follow that into performance, and then that shows results at the peak of the pyramid. And obviously, um, any coach that needs that, I don't mind sending uh, right. a clip of that or a picture of that. And then on the other one, this is the one that, you know, um, for our kids, they, they wanted to put this sign right out in front of our locker room as we exit because they wanted to touch this pyramid before. It was kind of one of those deals that that first group we had took over that, you know, they hit the, they hit the values board before they entered. And so we start with our values and then we go through the confidence that we earn through the pre- preparation and detail in which we do in practice and, and, and before the game even happens. 
how well we do our job. Uh, that I think is important. Owning, having ownership and and what your job is that comes from coaches' meetings, um, telling our kids what their roles are, how they impact their team, what they do well, um, and in some sense what they hinder the team. Um, and so how well you do your job, that's on our pyramid. And then at the end, all of that will take care of itself. The scoreboard will take care of itself if you do everything underneath that. Book. The process. It's about the process, people. Yep. Yep. Next thing we thought about, not necessarily thought about, was next thing was very important to us is be relationship driven. And um, one of the things I'm going to cover here in a minute is, just, is the 3D coaching. And I don't know if you, I'm sure you've heard of 3D coaching, but um, you know, we want to be three dimensional. We want to be relationship driven. We want to have a personal relationship with our kids outside of basketball, where your kids know that you love them, you care for them, you're there for them, not only in sports, but you're there for them outside. And so some of these snippets are, you know, this is a Christmas party and my wife hosts a Christmas party for them and does a, she's excellent with all of our girls and she's that typical, typical basketball mother for them. And then, um, you know, this is our cookout for our team parent meeting. We always do an end of the summer bash where we, we actually do our parent meeting at the same time, but we also do fun and games and we're competing during the day. And then all the, at the end we swim and, and, and eat. Uh, this is my little, I have a two year old. She's about to be two next month, but this is uh, one of my going to be seniors. Well, you look pretty rested coach. That's not too bad. I mean, <laughs> so I have, uh, a fi- I have a 15 year old and 18 year old. So those are those, those memories are like, I, I, and it was in the heyday of when we were, oh my God, it was like a blur, but I, and it's a fun age right now, man. It it's, is. I'm going to tell you. So here, here's, here's the, I, I was able to coach my son, I think 18 and the relationship him and I have over the, because he grew up in my gym. So the relationship mm-hmm. him and I have is pretty special, but I think the perfect window is like six to 10. So you have a little one. There's probably still in diapers, right? Uh, well, she's potty trained. She's in pull up. Yeah. Pull up. So, so once that all goes away, that's nice. But that six to eight, they're like little independent people, but <laughs> you still are like king of the world. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it that, that there's a that perfect little window for um yeah, the the daddy the daddy eyes. I love that. Yeah. So but, our, girls, our girls are great with her. Oh, you know? I bet. Hey, you and know what so, I you know what I always tell coaches? You can tell what kind of player or person they are is how they deal with your kids. Absolutely. You know yeah. what I mean? It's it's one of those things you just watch. You don't say anything, you just watch. Yeah, and 100%. you can't fake that. And if you do, it's for short spurts. But the ones that y- you can just tell, um, the relationship thing is huge. Um, it, as I've gotten older, and I've said this to other coaches and podcasts, as I've gotten older, this is 80% of the gig right here. This yeah. relation, it, it's 20% the X's and O's. And we, you can watch YouTube videos to the cows come home if you want to watch, learn how to do stuff. Mm-hmm. But it's from the military part, right? If you're going to go to battle with me, you got to know I got your back. For sure. For <laughs> you sure. know, um, and it's the same here. Yeah. And I want our kids, and this is our whole staff. We, this is this thing that we drive home with our staff, period. is like, you know, like if a kid, if a kid's having a bad day, we should be the first ones to catch it because we're relationship driven. We, right. we know what's going on. Not always everything going on outside their lives, but we need to be, we need to be, so engaged that they're they're willing to have those conversations with us and that happens a lot and they're willing to have a bad day like i can yeah. think back gosh and it was january or february and one of my guys he's like my sixth or seventh man he was just having a bad day and mm-hmm. i had him in class sorry kind of knew but then i could just see it so one of my coaches was starting to I, so i walk over i go you gotta just i'm not gonna use his name but i'm gonna say you have to use player at you have to leave player x alone he's having a really bad day no one's going to pull him out of it at this point. Let's just move on. We, I've already talked to him. We'll talk to him again. And then by the end, he was smiling and it was all good. Yeah. But, but if, if, if I would have let my coach go at him, because he wasn't doing what he needed to do, but mm-hmm. he's a teenage boy and he was just having one of those days. Mm-hmm. It, it didn't affect our practice. So if I would let him go at him like he normally would have and he normally would have responded to, we'd have lost him. Like, but he knew that we had his back. He knew I had his back. Um, and that was something else was going on. Eventually I find out what it was, but, um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and just, just being involved with them, not only just in sports, but you know, outside, I think, you know, some of these kids, it's, you have to, you have to sit back and look at it from a different lens, I believe. 
some of these kids have to go out of basketball and then go to work until 10 at night or 11 at night right. and then, and then turn around and do homework until one. And then, oh, by the way, they've got a, an FCA meeting for coach Neal at, at seven 30 in the morning before class. And so, and then they never miss. And, and right. that's the type of kid we're dealing with. And so on those bad days, you have to be, you have to be a, um, a shoulder. Sometimes you've got to be um, the one that steps away and just lets them um, deal with it themselves. Right. And so, but being relationship driven and understanding each and every one of your kids, you understand how they respond to things and so on and so forth. So, um, Anyways, the, the, the one, um, the picture in the middle is a kid that I've got playing collegiate ball. This is us um, going to watch her at a game before our season started. And, uh, you know, I, I think her name's Gabby Adams. Another, another good indicator is whether they come back. Oh, guaranteed. I'm Gabby's telling still, you. Gabby's still, and I've had, Gabby just graduated the year before last. And, um, I mean, she still calls me um, on out, outside of things and, you know, ask about my daughter and, um you know, and asked me to ask to open for me to open up the gym for her. And, and uh, I mean, the relationship there, you know, all of them are extended version daughters of what I have in my house. And so they're, ex they're, ex they're a second family. And I want that relationship. I think you've got to want that or you're not going to be successful. Um, and you're also doing, to be honest, I'll just, I'll scold because I'll just be the old coach. You're doing it for the wrong reason. Because if you're mm -hmm. only doing it for the wins, you're doing it for the wrong reason. 100%. The winds, the winds will, the winds will run into each other after a while, but it's the 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 players that you touch won't. So you know, I'll I'll scold the young coaches. It's hard <laughs> when you're young and you want to win so bad, but it yeah. will take care of it. The process will take yes. care of itself. Yes, it will come if you build it the right way. You will have successes, and and it's also how you measure success. I mean, the success is not measured just with wins and losses. It is not. Um, so another thing we wanted to do, continue on that building your brand and identity, we wanted to do things that were different from other people. We wanted to, we wanted others to envy even around us um, what we do. And so I had our media, me and our boys coach had our media guy created a hype video for us. And we post that on Twitter. We have an entry run out. And, and so I won't, I won't go through that whole video. I'll let you. Do you have a video board in your gym? We have a video board in our gym. Yep. We yeah. um, got it. It's nice. We got, we got one like four or five years ago. It's nice. We don't utilize it. Game changer. It's a game changer for your kids. That's a, they look forward to that. That's something that, um, that gets them fired up. And for coaches, we're always trying to find the intrinsic motivation things that gets them excited. And it was, now that's an expensive motivation tool but right um it, it's huge and so we took advantage of it our media our media class built this for us do, do a phenomenal job and so that's anyways that's our hype video but not a lot of teams have that and so right. when they come to our place and we're having our starting lineups and that stuff happens you can see some some parents and and some other other teams looking up there and watching that whole thing like gosh that's awesome Right. And, and, and I think that was important for our kids because when my, when we do our youth club uh, games, like we'll sometimes we'll do uh, like two or three times. Uh, well, actually more than that, but we bring in our youth club organizations and they play during our halftime, just do like a small inner squad. One for me that gets butts in the seats for our games, right. helps gate financially Two, it, it provides an excitement for our younger programs that we can build uh, from the bottom up. And, um, but they get all see this. And then, you know, hopefully the, the, mi the mindset is, is that you, they want to be a part of that as they grow through it and they, they continue with it and, and, and they improve and all that. So we, 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 we do small stuff like that. That's just a tidbit. Talking about 3D coaching, this is the, all the way down through our, our coaching staff. Um, again, pyramid of success, John Wooden. Um, first dimension, obviously, for us coaches is the fundamentals. That's the first thing we always hit. When I was a young coach, I always thought it was all about the fundamentals. And um, everything has to be um, fundamentally sound and, and high detailed. And, and those are your strength and your speed and your quickness and stuff like that. And then you have the second tier of that, which is the psych psychological part, um, how you motivate them. Um, you know, body and mind, um, Zen, Zen master stuff, Phil Jackson. Right. Uh, you know, and then, then you have at the top of the pyramid, see, see some coaches can hit the fundamentals and they're great at it. Some coaches are great with the relationship and the psychological part 
and connecting with their with their students on that level or their athletes on that level. But if you never reach the top, if you never can pierce the heart and have the buy-in that they love, care for you, then you don't fully reach your potential with your athletes. And so one of the things that this is one of the things is a visual for our coaches is, hey, we want to touch the heart. We want to we want to make sure that they understand that they were, we're there for them, not only just body and mind, but um, body, mind, and spirit. And so, um, you know, you, we want to try to be great at all three, not just one, not just two. And so we feel like if you capture their heart, my kids will run through a brick wall for me. Um, and, and if you don't, they won't. Right. I mean, I'm telling you, all my great teams have had – quote football players that are mm -hmm. that that are they're football players that play basketball um but every one of them loved us and would run through the wall for us and would do some of the stuff that needed to be done on the court um because we got to their hearts like they they, they were playing to be with their friends and blah, blah blah but then all of a sudden they became basketball players because we got to their heart um it was great yeah it, it's special when that happens it makes me giddy when i think about it yeah absolutely yeah and, and it makes for fun teams i it mean does. it makes for a lot of fun teams it does um one of the things that you asked for is, is a favorite quote of mine and i think this is this is huge this is this speaks to our program this is what we try to do as a staff if you have a vision for a year you plant wheat if you have a vision for 10 years you plant trees if you have a vision for a lifetime you plant people I love that. So I think that's uh, that's what we try to do on a daily basis, not just with basketball, but we're trying to make good citizens, good kids, and and hopefully that you know we can create um, great citizens to our community and others that go out and do things that we taught them at a young age. Um, and and I think that builds into also like building your staff, putting great people around you um, to be successful. Um, some of the ways that we do that with planning people, obviously we do FCA. Um, there's some other curriculums and programs we've looked at that, that are good character building curriculums. Um, obviously FCA is one of those that's nationally known. Yep. There's lots um, of them. I mean, they, they, we have an FCA in our school too. And then there's, 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 there's a couple other ones that are really good. It, it, yeah. It, it, again, fitting your, fitting your school and your community, I think is really important. Yeah. Next thing we wanted to do is have a vision um, and then how to make that vision a reality for our programs. Um, so one of the things that I looked at and, and before we basically before the whole thing started is how am I going to get from A to Z? Um, and, and we're starting at, at, at ground level. How are we going to build this thing? And one, the vision was to operate with high integrity. I think that was number one for me. Be a high integrity person all the time. Um, be first class. Um, have a competitive team in our conference and state by developing the women of character that we wanted to develop. And I think that's what we showed you in the prior slides. Right. Um, teach and exhibit leadership. I think that's extremely important. We want all of our kids to have that buy-in um, and lead in different ways. Not, there, there can be on your team, you can have stronger leaders than others, but we want them all to have buy-in and value within our, within our group. And so teaching leadership, I think that's hard. I think that's sometimes forgotten. Um, earn everything through our hard work and dedication and commitment to the program. I always want to do what's right for kids. It may not be what's popular, but I always <laughs> want to do what's right. Right. Um, um, have a program, and I wanted, we wanted to have a program that others envy and want to emulate. Um, we all felt that was our vision. If you look at Dick Bennett's advice um, for successful program, he talks about, you know, surround yourself with good people, passionate people, surround yourself with people that believe in servanthood. He says the road to greatness. Um, I have very little ability to finish anything on my own, but if we do it together, we can accomplish so much. Um, and then do not allow anybody to come in and break up that family unity. Um, you got to protect your team. And then think of, Think about who you, who you are, what your identity is, and then stamp it. I, that, I always took that to heart. You know, I always took that advice. I, obviously, uh, Dick's a legend, and he's, 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 he's a monarch in our, in our industry. And, and uh, you know, He's a Wisconsin son. guy. Wisconsin yeah, guy. He, yep. Yeah. And so, uh, I mean, we, could, we talk about blocker mover and all that, but it's uh, – it's, uh, he, he's, he's – I've taken this to heart, and we, we – we, kind of use some of his stuff 
And Tony's the same way. Tony's the same way in Virginia. Oh, absolutely. Tony's the exact same way. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And then how do we make that reality? How do we make our vision reality? One, I felt like I had to hire the best coaches and teachers for our kids. I didn't want to just hire a name. You know, sometimes uh, when you get into, when you get into head coach, when you're a head coach and you have to hire people, sometimes you you have an application and, and there are some bigger names than others. And doesn't make doesn't mean it's the always right fit for you or your program, um, and so I have to make sure when you go through the hiring process or you're putting people around you, one, it's got to fit you, it's got to fit your personality. Two, they got to have some of the same interests and motives as you do and values, um, and those are huge. And we wanted to hire the best coaches and teachers for our kids all the way down. Um, and, and we look for that even through the youth league, like when we have control of kind of like who helps out with our youth league program, obviously we look for some of those same values. Um, and then we wanted to, we wanted to develop. And I, so before we, die, before we go on to that, what, what does that entail? Like, so I agree um, for your kids, you're going to hire the best coaches and teachers for your kids. What are you looking for in that? Other than um, following your kind of vision statement. For sure. I think, uh, I think that when I look at coaches, I look at what drives them, what motivates them. Um, you know, sometimes you'll get like I've had, and I don't, I'm not going to mention any names or anything, but right. I, I've had coaches that have head coaches that applied for a junior high job just because they want to get into our location. Well, that's the motive there is wrong. Right. Um, and so I think you look for what drives them, what motivates them, why their why, and we'll talk about that. That's extremely important. We'll talk about that at the end. That's a great book too, but yeah, um, go ahead. Yeah. Yep. And so I think those are the things that we look at. Are they high character people? Um, I think you've got to dive into reference checks and see what type of people they are outside of who they list. Um, because you want to know, you want to know what you're, what you're, you're building your family. Like I'm not going to let someone live in my house until I, I mean, you know, I'm I, a friend knows a friend. That's great, but I'm that doesn't mean they're going to live in my house with me. Like I'm gonna that that's the way you got to kind of treat it. That's the way I've always treated it. It's like mm-hmm. I'm gonna right. do I'm gonna do my first check, but then I'm gonna do my second and third check just to make sure we're all aligned in the same. You know, no, that's a great yeah. reference. That's a yeah. great reference. Yeah, yeah. it's like because this is your team is your home. Your team is your family. It's the same thing. That's the way I always looked at it. And I've had two staffs. The reason we've won if I've had two staffs and literally I know I trust them. I know they're not after my job. I know they're, mm-hmm. they're doing what's right by my kids. Boom. If, if that's the only reason I'm still coaching, probably if I had a turnover all the time, it, staff is there's two days that are really important. The day you pick your staff and the day you pick your team. Mm-hmm. Those are really important days. Yeah. Um, <laughs> No, hiring coaches is important, and yeah. and they got to be good teachers. I mean, I I look at that like you know some I think the the generic uh, or the the way that some of the administrators look at coaches are they're, they're not always great teachers. Well, I I want the flip side of that. I want a great teacher because if you're a great teacher, guess what you're going to do in my practice? It's 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 a basically it's, I, we run a talented and gifted program for basketball players is the way I always refer yeah. to it. I'm a yep. teacher. I'm a, I'm a teacher that coaches basketball. I, mm-hmm. I love basketball. I have a little, especially with teenage boys, I have a little bit more hook because I'm a basketball coach. Mm-hmm. Like I have something more that they want than learning, you know, trig, I'm a math teacher than learning trig functions or geometry. You know, I have something more that they necessarily want, but I'm still teaching them the same. I'm teaching them every day. I think that's it. Yeah. You're looking for a teacher. Is what makes your value in the district even higher, in my yeah. opinion. I mean, yeah. if you get, if you get, if you hold the carrot, um, and you've got the keys to the ship, you're important. Oh, I mean, it's <laughs> so. like in our town, it's like street cred. I got street cred. Like, yeah. like Coach Collins has won all these state titles. Coach Collins knows what he's doing. There's, there's cred, street cred that comes with that. So, yeah. Especially on the boys' side, there's there's definitely that. All right, I didn't mean to get us off. I just no, wanted to no, you're good. dive in because I know coaches that are listening to this that want to be head coaches, like, yes, getting the job is only the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, there's so much. Who you surround so yourself much. with. Because I can tell you how many coaches I've talked to over the years that haven't, that, that got the job and could have done great, but who they surrounded themselves with. Hey, coach, hope you're enjoying the video. Uh, make sure you subscribe and like. We love those. 
um, hit the little bell up above, you'll get notified. We put a new video out every day. If you're looking to put some gold balls or some silver balls, hopefully not too many silver balls in your showcase, let me help you. Teachhoops.com for coaches who want to get better. 14 day free trial. All right, let's head back to the video. Brought the ship down. Their first mates was, yeah. And sometimes you don't have any control over that. Sometimes you, you have, I you mean, you, you get who you get. And, but I think it's also just as we do with coach to player, I think you've got to Develop. you've got to coach your coaches just yeah. as like you coach yeah. your players and you got to yeah. take them from point A to point B, if that's your vision. Yeah. Um, and it's got to be a straight alignment there. There can't be a deviation on alignment. It's and, a coaching handbook. That's the first thing I did was do a coach. This is what I want. Let's talk about it. And then we, you know, it's probably gone through four or five different changes over the years, but this is what we want. This is what we believe in. This is how we should do it. Here's how things should go. And then we, as a coaching staff, we sit down and talk about it. And then oh, we should try this. It's like, okay, you know, um, and I've changed. If you looked at it 20 years ago, it's not the same as it is right now. It's changed a lot, actually. So, um, all right, keep going, coach. I'm sorry. No, you're good. Um, we wanted to have enthusiastic de de excuse me, dedication from our coaches and athletes. Um, we wanted to train leaders year round, like we said earlier. We wanted to emphasize um, skill development, speed, agility, strength, and conditioning. Those were huge emphasis that we wanted to have in our program. Um, we wanted to reach out and have a personal relationship with each one of them. Those were making that reality. And then, in, 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 and this is important. This is probably the most important one. Is in, by implementing a program that works for us. And the best way that I can describe that is, is my first year. You know. Um, we had to teach a lot of terminology and communication and the way we spoke, not because the prior coach didn't teach that, but our, our philosophies and stuff were different. And so we had to teach them um, our language, our communication. Yeah, it, it, so this, first of all, I can tell that came from your military background, I'm sure. Yeah. Because um, I remember reading a book about this. Basically, it's my table of contents. Like, here's how we're going to, this is how we're going to refer to as you know, help side. And, you know, some mm -hmm. people talk strong side or ball side. I want everybody talking the same language because otherwise in the, in the fog of war, if I can use a, a, an analogy again, if you're not all using the same terms, people aren't going to understand. And that's where misdirection happens. So 100%, 100%. and that's so young coaches that are listening, start working on that work on your table of contents, work on your glossary. Here's how I'm going to refer to you know, ball side or help side or strong side or what, are, how are you going to talk about screens and all those things? You will be amazed how quickly several sheets of paper fill up. Um, but you just want it to be uniform because there's too many different ways coaches talk about specific things. And, and I would say the evolution of where we were four years ago to where we are now is, is night and day. And we knew that it was going to be an uh, evolving process from where we started. We couldn't just throw – when we first took over, one, we had different – We, not that we didn't have good athletes. We had good athletes, but we had different style athletes. And I think fitting your team is huge. But um, we knew the style in which we wanted to play. We just couldn't get there in that first year. And I would say probably couldn't get there in that first two years um, just because um, they were – it was a different version of how we wanted to build it. Um, and so it, it was going to be a huge process, and we couldn't do it just in one or two years. So, but – we still had to do things for those kids, those pro, those teams to be successful. So we started off having our languages and, and we kept it as basic as possible where they were very successful. Um, we ran a ball screen continuity, which is really not exactly what I wanted to do, at, but it was what was going to be best for the team um, with their personnel. We had that year and they ran it very well. Um, and then that's evolved into even more like where we got, we, I wanted to, to go more motion, but I couldn't teach motion in the first year um, by taking over that because there was such a big learning curve and it would have set them up for failure. And so we wanted to go more to a motion um, style offense. Well, that translation, that transitioned into, um, you know, teaching language where we're really, uh, instead of continuity driven, we're more action driven motion and, and, um, and our language now plays a huge part of that. Like we speak, we talk about it, like we speak a different language than everybody else does. And, right. and, and when somebody says, and, and a lot of this stuff I've, I've taken from Mike neighbors, who was the West, or excuse me, was the Washington head girls coach. And then now had one of the best players in the country and Chelsea plum or excuse me, Kelsey plum. And then, um, 
and then has uh, the University of Arkansas job now. He's from he's from Arkansas and came back home. But um, you know, he he has his own language, and I I've had multiple conversations with him, and we. We, he's a good guy. He's, oh, he's, he's phenomenal. An if you've he's never had those, to he's one of those guys that he's not a he's not a household name per se, um, but he will be. He will. Yo, be. Big, yeah. If you haven't had a chance to listen to Mike Neighbors, do yourself a favor because that guy shares so much. He's got a, a newsletter. Yeah. He, I mean, he, he and he's so well with our high school coaches. I mean, if I called him or text him right now, I would say within five minutes he's going to answer me, and he's probably going to have like a essay version of how he wants to explain it right um, if not he's going to tell me to come up to his office and so that's how that's how cool it's it's awesome to have coaches like that that are willing to share but anyways we took some stuff on the evolution of our offense and we we um we got to where we are now and we couldn't do that in year one so we had to have an implement uh, implement a program that worked for us at the time and but also having that long, long-term vision and maintaining that vision of where you want to be right um, and I would say in year four, we are where we want to be offensively and defensively. Um, so I had a program action plan. These are some of the things that I wanted to hit right when I got uh, feet on the ground, right when I started is go through the relationships, develop strength, be consistent. We wanted to focus on nutrition. I think that was important. Um, we wanted to develop great shooting habits. We didn't want them just to um, only have shooting habits in practice. We wanted yeah. to develop them outside. We focused on form all the way down, um, and then that was early. And then emphasize, emphasis on details and attention to details, um, and then having confidence in yourself and your teammates. I think that was like our initial, what, what are the main things we want to focus on right from the bat, off the bat. And then the other thing is this is huge for us is if you want recognition and if you want your community to be excited about what you're doing, you can't keep everything in-house. You can't keep all of your accomplishments just with yourself. And, and we live in a technology, technological world where at the, touch of a, uh, at the touch of a button, anybody can access any bit of information. And so we want to highlight all the great things that our athletes are doing, not only inside of, of basketball, but outside in the community as well, because everybody sees that. And, uh, so one of the things that we talked about with my administration is when we before we didn't have any of that. Nobody knew what what good things that our our kids were doing unless it came out in the paper. Right. And those were fewer. Um, it just didn't happen as much. And so um, and our local paper tries to do a great job with with recognizing things, but they don't recognize everything. And that was I felt like that was our job as a staff. Um, Important, important uh, it's deal marketing. for marketing. It's marketing. You got to market 100%. your program. That goes back to yeah. building your brand, building yep. your brand, what you stand for. Um, at the front of the page, you know, one of the things that our, we had a new AD uh, probably four years ago. And one of the things he took over is he redid our logos. And it was huge because like our logo, we had a good logo, but we made it our own. It was kind of like a copyrighted logo we had. It looked like the Atlanta Hawk logo. Right. Um, and so we made it our own. And one of those logos that you see on the front of my uh, presentation was the things we look. That's a that's a statewide brand now because of the things that our coaching staff has done. And we provided an awesome logo that everybody recognizes when they see it. You know, 10 right. years ago, we might have not known where P. Ridge, Arkansas was right. in our state. And I think that if you talk to any sports media, anybody around our location um, in, in the state of Arkansas, just in general, is going to look at that and go, yeah, that's, I know where, I know exactly where P Ridge is at. And so um, promoting our program. So here's some highlights that we did. Um, we took some canvas stuff. This is a kid that was a uh, all state honorable mention kid. Um, going to be a phenomenal, all these, she's a junior going to be a phenomenal starter for me coming back. Um, another kid that was an all conference honorable mention. Um, another, we just took that and we, we posted that on Twitter um and here, here's some other twitter posts like kids love that love it and they eat it up and our community loves it i mean our community yep. is sitting there i'll get a i'll get a direct message saying hey coach congratulations on this and and i, I didn't even know this was happening <laughs> right and yeah. so um yeah it's just they, they eat that up and it's one way to highlight your kids even the ones that don't always get the recognition you know um i think it's important like we highlight birthdays 
uh, I don't miss birthdays. I make sure, and my girls can sometimes get frustrated with me because I want a picture on the birthdays. And the bottom right is is a set of twins I've got down here, and it's their birthday. And th that's something that's small, but our community gets to recognize it. Um, it reminds our team, hey, it's that it's that kid's birthday, so they don't forget. Um, and and we celebrate that those those things. One, it highlights the kid, and I, that's the number one. It's important to me. That's the relationship part, um, because somebody may not, somebody may have forgot their birthday. But right. you know, those are, those are the small things. Um, you know, when we go state bound, and we go, uh, you know, a news article from the uh, that the Democrat Gazette did, and so we we tag it and we push it through our media, and then everybody else in our community sees it. Our boys program retweets it. We retweet stuff from them, and it builds a sense of unity and community within our programs. And uh, it's, it's, again, building your brand. And so um, I think it's important to, to promote, promote everything academically, uh, community uh, involvement, um, anything that you can promote with your kids. Um, I had an action plan of, of a one, three, five year plan. I think that's important. Um, yes, and I, we, it's like, it's like, it's like mapping out the season. You got to map out your plan for your program too. Yep. Yeah. And, and, it says up here, set program goals. The things that I want to talk about, this is now uh, my, my version has changed on that. If you've never read, read burn your goals by uh, Josh Medcalf, you need to, you need to spend some time reading that. That's a great literature. Um, and it talks about, uh, you know, this is before this is, I kind of had this a vision of, of what I want to do, but it talks about standards driven instead of goal driven. Right. Um, and so that kind of intertwines. I know it's a set program goals, but it, he talks about Josh Metcalf talks about burning your goals and and being standard driven instead of uh, goal driven. And it's a phenomenal book, by the way, if you haven't read it, I, it's a good read. But in year one, we wanted to set that foundation, our core values, our expectations, our terminology. We wanted to align our programs all the way down from youth groups all the way up to our senior high programs. We wanted to install that FCA program and, and build character. Um, we wanted to be getting, building strong relationships between coaches and our families and parents in our community. Um, we wanted to get a hold of fundraising. That's an important for a young coach. Yeah. Um, and then we wanted to compete, the, the word being compete in our classification. Um, I didn't say we wanted to be out here and, and win. The, we wanted to compete. Um, right. And we felt like we could do that in year one. If you got to walk anything. before you could run, people. Yep. Yeah. By year three, we wanted to strengthen all that stuff with terminology and build on it. We wanted to implement the FCA program down. Um, and then we were looking at moving up at classification at the time. And so we wanted to get ready to move into the 5A and then compete in the 5A for, you know, conference title or whatever, a playoff bid. Um, and then by year five, we were all the way down, um, being self-sufficient with fundraising, not necessarily having to rely so much on budgeting. And then we wanted to be competing for conference titles and state titles. And I can say that in year three, we won a conference title. This, this year was the first time in 11 years that our team has been, that a girls team has been to the state tournament. We finished in the lead eight. We got beat out by the defending champs. You, you, um, you, you got to finish your season? Got to finish it. Yeah, we finished it the week before. A team in our conference actually was down the day before their final game and got canceled. So they were actually in hotel in Hot Springs for their final and got canceled. And he's his his their coach is named Brad Johnson. He's a good friend of mine, and and we played them four times this year, and uh, throughout conference play and tournament play, and and they were good. They I, they had a really good shot at winning it. And, and uh, that's tough. Did the boys? So the boys definitely didn't make it then, huh? To the final. Uh, our school or just in general? In general, did they? No, so we play the boys and girls at the same time. So they, okay. they, okay. they uh, it's over a span of three days um, or two days, something like that, two or three days. And um, anyways, they start early and they go a different classification. So they go 1A girls, 1A boys, 2A girls, 2A boys. And okay. so they got the first day in. And so the 1As and 2As had state title winners for boys and girls. Oh, okay. And, but then 3A – up to 6A got canceled, and so it was unfortunate. Our, our, our association, I think, uh, you know, they, they probably caught a lot of heat because they named um, state champions for both teams. Um, 
because uh, – but I think they did it right by kids. I mean, that, yes, anything after t- – I have no problem with that. Yeah. Um, if, you, if you're in the finals, you're a champion, whatever. Well, I, yeah, we'll count you the state. But it's problem – like our boys only got to the Elite Eight mm-hmm. or Sweet 16. And so it's like, what are you going to do? It's like you're just done. Like it's yeah. over at that point. Yeah. 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 So that was a big hurdle for our kids. I mean, we, we made it to the state tournament. That was huge. Um, you know, and I think that goes back to like, uh, you know, burning your goals. That was a goal for ours, you know, and I think, you know, Josh talks about in his book, you know, you get to that point, well, you've already reached your goal. So you really have, you don't really aspire to go farther. Right. And, and so, you know, there's no like upset about it once, you know, you got beat and as coaches, you know, we want them to reach their potential, not what their goal is. And so um, now, did we get beat out by a better team at the time? Yeah, I think I think at the time they, they were playing better basketball than us. Um, and but um, I didn't want, you know, just because we reached our goal that it was over. Um, right. Because at that, at that sense, you know, then you're you're building unrealistic goals. So anyways, that's a if, burn your goals. Josh Medcalf, outstanding. Um, Setting expectations in your program is huge. For your student athletes, you want them to stick to your core values. You want them to be a competitor with everything they do um, in basketball and in the classroom. I think faith, family, and basketball was big things for us. Um, one of the biggest pet peeves I've got is no profanity. I don't, I don't handle profanity very well. Um, our kids know that. That's including the social media part. And I think, obviously, our normal school rule of alcohol yeah. is back um, you probably have to deal with that with boys probably more than I do with girls, but, um, the profanity it, thing is hard. It slips too. It it's does. Like, yeah, it, it does. Slips. It does. Slips. And it, you know, and it does for us too as coach sometimes. I mean, I, I, I try not to do it anywhere in public. How does the military deal with swearing? Oh, you've heard the term cuss like a sailor. They don't, I mean, it's, is that it's, true? Oh yeah. We got yeah. <laughs> military got bad mouth, but okay, that's what I thought. I thought that I I just didn't want to jump to that conclusion that that was the way it was. <laughs> no, but, but I, we, no, I mean, I think I've slipped maybe two times in five years. Yeah. yeah. So I try not to, and and uh, but we've got to have the same expectations as our kids, and so um, right. so our coaching staff's expectations. If we want to make sure that we're the the firm foundation of those core values, that we're following those as well. We're committed and loyal um, to not only our program, but our administration, um, to the head coach, to our athletes and our peers around us. We work harder and more efficiently than anybody else. That, that's got to be an expectation for us. Um, we have high communication between staff um, to attend all staff meetings and practices on time. I think that's important. Um, and, then, and then having that positive work attitude of wanting to be there and wanting to to be better, um, treating all athletes with dignity and respect. That's out. That's not just in our program. That's outside as well. Going to football games, going to other events, and 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 treating kids how they you know should be treated, and, and being respectful because they'll, they'll turn around and come to our games because we did that. Right. And then, um, and then just be first class. And then I had my own expectations. I, I had expectations for myself. Um, core values again number one clearly developed a program vision and plan and plan to implement that I I showed that in this presentation I want to work harder and more effectively than any other I want to surround the athletes with people of high character and expectations that go to the staff that may be guest speakers Um, I wanted to put as many high character people in front of them as I can Um, I want to be organized and prepared at all times Um, have athletes that properly supervise and care for um, to be, this is, and this is huge is to be a great ambassador of our program and our school system. I think that. Yeah. Quote unquote, your own players are your best recruiters because they're marketing your product or your brand. I I agree. I mean, that's, they're ambassadors. They're, they're Mm -hmm. the ones that the little girls want to look up to and want to become. I know. Absolutely. I mean, we go, um, you know, we, we try to go down and, uh, mingle with the elementary kids and, and do a lunch buddy system and, and those type of things that, that just that gets our kids out. One, gets our kids out and being recognized within our school system. But our kids, you know, those, those younger kids are fired up to see who our kids are and, and see them. Um, but we want to be great ambassadors uh, and we want to sell what we do. Um, we want others to envy that. Um, 
and then promote. I think that's a huge thing in coaching is you've got to promote not only your kids, um, like we talked about on social media, and not only your program, like we talked about on social media, but you've got to promote your staff. That is huge. You've got, if your staff is doing great things for you and, and they aspire to be head coaches in the future, you've got to promote them within and sell them just as much as you yep. sell yourself yep. in your own program. It's like being a freshman player and a sophomore player and then a varsity player. The coaches want to do the same things. You want coaches like that. You definitely want coaches like that. And you, you hit it on the head earlier saying, you know, you wouldn't be where you are if it, you didn't have the staff. I'm not naive to that. My guys are phenomenal uh, and, and they are going to be great head coaches and I would do anything in the world to help them reach their goals. Right. And, and I, as a coach, have got to promote that, not only to yes. um, our kids, but other coaches around our area that ask and, and through um, just giving them a sense of ownership within our program. I, you know, I think it's important that I'm not the only, I'm not the only brain in the office that right. I've got to take, I've got to value, or excuse me, I've got to um, take what they say and, 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 and respect it hear it I've got to make the final decision but that relationship grows over time as well and and our coaches right now I mean my assistant coach Reed Smith is 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 the best scout person I've ever seen at any level um his attention to detail is the thing is when you find a good staff I've said this in other podcasts I I mean I talk like 30 percent of practice now or 40 percent of practice because we are like a well-oiled machine and I, I literally, I have a, I have an assistant coach if Nate's listening that does my scouting. Like he does, he comes, he, it's like a college program. I, I, we try to run it that way. Like he takes that team, he takes it. And then he comes back to me, gives me the information, gives me the clips, blah, 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 the scout. And I go through it and then I'll ask some questions and I'll go through it with the team. It's unbelievable. When you find people like that, find their, what I tell coach head coaches is find your assistant coaches superpower too. Like, mm -hmm. Like my, like Nate is a great organizer. He's a great X and O guy. He, he's a great at scouts. Those are his superpowers. I'm going to feed his superpowers because it makes all of us better. It makes him better. Um, so that, I think that that's a life lesson, but uh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry. I mean, every, every coach has their own knack, like what they're great at. And I think you, that's, that's a great reference to, you know, finding what they're great at and utilizing it because and, and you know this as a, as a head coach, the, the kids don't always come to me for everything. Sometimes they'll come to your assistant. And uh, Good cop, bad cop. Sometimes you got to be bad cop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think putting them in front of our kids in a, in, a, in a head coaching style, like letting them, like I do some things in our practice plan that they drive home the emphasis rather than me. They need right. to hear their voice sometimes over than me. Now they're fine tuned to my voice. Right. However, they need to understand what he's doing um, is important as well. You use a whistle of practice? I do. I do use okay. a whistle. Uh, I'm not whistle driven on, on control sometimes. Um, I, don't I, use, I haven't used one in 25 years. I, I'm a whistle guy. I, I think you know why? It, because I want them in tune with me. Yeah. Like, I don't care if the whistle, I don't care if the whistle goes off in a game and it blows, you know, half the time yeah. the whistle's wrong. Yeah, I think I don't want to be whistle driven. Like I don't like to stop yeah. practice a lot. I try not to stop, especially through mistakes. They got to learn through mistakes. And but I think I, I think it's just a personal thing for me because you know usually when a practice goes bad and I start to get frustrated, that whistle starts to get I start to chew down on that whistle a little bit harder. So I think it's just really for me more than it is for the yeah. purpose of the whistle. But <laughs> um, but the last thing I think is is extremely important for a coach, any coach, whether young, old, is understanding your why. I believe it's ex extremely important to understand why we do things um, because if you don't, you lose you lose the end focus of what you're really doing it for. In everything. Like I can tell you from the, from the, the coaches I've been talking to about practice, like you should ask about why you do everything. Like why are you getting on the bus that way? Why are you – like everything should have a why. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's hard to come up with the answer to the why, but everything should have a why. I think no, that's great. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. And if you don't, it's like you talked about earlier, is like you lose that motivation to, right. you know. but here's my why. My why is that I feel like every athlete deserves a coach who believes in them. That's, I think that every, every athlete deserves something like that. 
And then it's obviously to me, it's bigger than bulk. This picture here is for pancreatic cancer. We had a, a, a mama close to our program that her lost her daddy pancreatic cancer. She does this huge, um, huge fundraiser week and, and we dress in purple. Well, all of our kids get dressed up in purple. That has nothing to do with basketball. Right. But um, it has everything to do with um, supporting others and being there for others. And it, that is my why. I, well, I, man, I tell the youth coaches that are listening, you do not want to be a kid's last coach. <laughs> like, that should be your goal in life. Like, obviously, as head coaches in the high school level, we might be their last coaches just because of ability. But I never want to be a kid's last coach. Like, when I was a youth coach, I always thought about that. I don't want to be the last one. I want them to love the game and keep playing it. So, um, so yeah, so your contact stuff, I will put, I'll put all this in the show notes. So if people want to get a hold of you and, or call you or tweet at you or yeah. You have Snapchat coach. Sounds good. Do you have Snapchat? Do I have Snapchat? I do not, man. I do not. I probably should. You, but. you should. You should. You're like, <laughs> so I, I, I've only had it for two years, and I'm an old dog. But I got it. Had my assistant set it up for me, and I basically have a chat, and they call it like, it's Coach Colin with Coach. They have a they have a chat with Coach, and it's like highlighted, so they That's know cool. when they're snapping. And that one, I'm on it, and then they have one without Coach. I don't know. I just I have a Facebook and I have Twitter. And yeah, I have Facebook. Instagram. They're not on Facebook though. The parents are on Facebook. The kids aren't on Facebook. I have an Instagram. They like it's Instagram. Really, Instagram's it's good. It's just to monitor really them. It's yeah. not really to. It's not Instagram's really good for pictures and stuff like that. TikTok's kind of, they're kind of on that's the big Yeah, that's the big deal. And I, I'm sorry. Some of these things that I just, as it evolves, I don't know if I'm ready to evolve with it. I, I just try to just because I, I was doing TikToks for like two, for like a month when this quarantine started, just so they could <laughs> see me. Like yeah. that, you know, me being funny and doing dad jokes and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, all right. So some questions for me. Tell me. Um, Tell me your coaching philosophy in one sentence. Uh, just coaching philosophy in general? Yeah, you're, you're in one sentence. Oh, man. Um, I think it goes back to some of the things that we, we want to we we build. I want to put a product out there that our, our community and our players and our coaching staff can be proud of. Okay, that's, um, that's a perfect. Um, <laughs> what, what do you think your biggest challenge is? As a head coach, yeah. Um, I think I think biggest challenge is always going to be. Um, I think the biggest challenge for me is never feel like I I know everything. Um, is always coming, continuing to be a you know the cliche word right now. The high word is a lifelong learner, um, and and never settle with just mediocre. I think always trying to challenge myself is my biggest challenge. Um, um, I like to push myself farther than, um, you know, than to be expected probably, but I want, I want, um, I want to be great at what I do. However, I don't want to be overly complex at what I do where, it, where I screw things up. Um, and so I want to, uh, I think the biggest challenge for me as a head coach is just continuing to better myself every year, um, continuing to promote my program to continue to be successful and relevant. Like we talked about earlier is you want to be relevant. You want to be, you know, not, not for me, but I want to know, I want everybody around us to know what, what we're doing in P Ridge and what we're doing as a school district. Um, so. Yeah. I think the lifelong learner thing, I wish I knew as much as I did in my twenties. Cause I thought I knew everything in my twenties. Yeah. No. <laughs> I don't think I know anything now. So it's one of the reasons I started the podcast. I wanted to learn more things. So yeah, I think lifelong learner, you know, that growth mindset, it, it is the kind of the thing mm -hmm. to say, but yeah. it's true. You yeah. can see my, where we're doing my thing, all the books I yeah. have. Um, so it's, that's just kind of, um, is there one coaching moment that we could dive into f f that would be a learning, uh, learning experience and a, a success, a failure, uh, a moment in your coaching career that would intrigue or allow the listeners to learn something? Um, I think two years ago, um, you know, like I said, the maturation of our, of our offense and evolution of our, of our offense and where it started to where it's gone. Um, for me, a coaching moment 
to where I kind of knew exactly where we wanted to go and where it kind of, it was like the, um, for us, um, you know, I look at my boys coach and he runs a lot of sets and, and set plays and stuff like that. And I'm a set play guy. I like set plays. I mean, we've had a bunch, when I transitioned over to women's sports, um, we couldn't run a whole bunch because, um, not because they couldn't learn it, but it was just a lot for them to remember. Right. Um, and we have to create this environment of playing all the time because like guys, they'll get out and play pickup and, and all that girls, you have to force that a little bit. Um, and so it's, it's, it's my whole theory. Like when they're in fifth grade, a boy has street cred. If he can play hoops on the playground at recess, girls don't have that. It's different. It's a, it's, it's a different, like, and I think hopefully that's changing. Um, but boys, that's like a hierarchy of when you're an athlete in like, I can see it in the elementary schools. Yeah. I mean, and there's no I, social, I, there's no social prominence when you're a girl and you're, you're doing that. I think that's changing. And I think maybe in 20, 30 years, it'll even be better. It's a, but tre it's a, it's a trending deal. Uh, it's a trending, have, it's trending you, up. You have your, you have your classes that do do that. Like I've yes. got a group that, that did do that at that right. age. And then um, you have those ones that are interested in other things. And right. so, um, capturing that lower so you can try to do that is important as a head coach. That's hard because you've got it. That's, that's something that's taught. Yeah. That's not something that you just do naturally. I think that's taught. Um, parents are a big help during that, during that process of creating that. I mean, nowadays, like they come in and play video games and blah, blah, blah. They never go outside. And um, you have to, you have to teach that and, and make that um, something that's important to your program. But, What's up? Go ahead. Oh, back to your question. Yeah. Um, so um, during the evolution of our offense, we had a couple years ago, we were, we were, I had a kid. It was kind of a cool uh, sequence of events that happened. I had um, that kid that I showed you that playing college ball that we went and watched. Um, we were down three points with uh, six, six seconds, something like that. And we had the full court to go. And I had one time or I had two timeouts. And the coach that we were playing ran a, a zone defense and man, had gone to both, uh, played a 3-2 zone, and then had gone to man, switching man. And so I wanted to run out of the net a transition offense set without burning the timeout with six seconds. The ball goes through the net, the free throw puts him up three, and I wanted to go. Well, at the free throw line, I'm, I'm talking to my point guard at the time, and I said, hey, Holland, we – let's go with this. And, uh, you know, I, I just call it out and Holland, my best player, all state player looks at me and goes, Oh my gosh, what is that? And she flinched and she had a moment of, of uncertainty there. The brain fart basically. Yes. Fart. Yes. It's one and of those things that just happens. That, yeah. that bothered me because, yeah. um, I felt like we had run that in practice. We had, you know, we, we do transition all the time. Um, but if my best player flinches, then I know my other four are not going to be have the confidence as well. So at the time, the ball goes through the net, I burn one. And I'm like, man, I really didn't want to burn it. I really at least wanted to get to half court. I didn't want, I didn't want them to set what – I wanted them to stay in the defense that we're in. So, but I felt like if I, we were just gone, I don't know if we would have got the outcome right. that we wanted. So I tell them I got one more. I tell them, I said, we're going to advance it. It was only a 30-second timeout, and I wanted to use my full of a second. So we're going to advance it to half court, and then we're going to run it off the side. That way I can kind of see what they're in. Well, I drew up a set play off the side for a zone, a set play off the side for a man. And, uh, you know, everybody's good. We're all ready to roll. We get on the sideline, and um, my best player again thinks that they're in man and I'm telling them which one to run versus zone because they are in zone and uh, they, she thinks they're in man. So she runs the man set and my, my point guard runs it correctly and realizes, oh, that's not the action and the clock's ticking down, clock's ticking down. Well, she heaves one up off the backboard from half court, goes in. We'd send it to overtime and end up winning. Got lucky and won. And so the whole point of this story was, is I looked at that and I said, I don't want when I call out set plays that have meaningless, if I say, hey, let's run five or let's run Bama or this, right. that they look at me and go, what is Bama? And how do I correlate that to what we're doing? 
And so we took our language and trans, we, we took our language and, and, and built it even further and we went all action driven. And so when you see, um, when you see me yell out a verbiage of what something is, if I yell out bang, well, bang may be a ball screen in our motion offense. Right. And, right. and so, or if I, you know, I have a, um, number system with it as well for floors and positions right. and, and we went completely positionless. Um, it was still running our same offense, but we changed our language. And so now without them knowing I'm running set plays without them saying, Hey, right. it's and, there, and there's not the stress of it because it, what, and, and people are listening to this years from now, we're in the, we're in the quarantine stage right now, but kids, kids deal with stress differently. Like, and you don't really know how they're going to deal with it until they're put into it. I mean, we can try to simulate it in practice, but you didn't know how your star was going to react. To it's, that. it's not her fault. It's, it's, it's not, not her fault. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I but, 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 but you, you probably practice it and she probably knew it. And then something happened in that, in that yep. stress of the end of the game caused her to react. She I see it in my house. My kid's going to a little Ivy. He's super smart. He's going to Middlebury. He is super unmotivated. He has been motivated for 18 years. He is a great student. He's super unmotivated right now because you know what? He's under stress. He, this isn't, he's not seeing his friends. He's graduating from high school, whatever. Mm -hmm. I, I could care less about that at this point. Um, but, but I didn't know how he was going to react to it. Some kids are, some kids want structure. They want more work. Yeah. So it's, it, it's, it's not against you or her. It's just like, you didn't know that. that and that's the, that's for the young coaches. That's where you got to pivot. Like, yeah. okay. We, that had to, we had to build, we had to, we still kept our same philosophies and all that, but, I wanted to trigger that brain activity that when I, that action is called that they know exactly what that action is. Right. And it, there had to be some form of correlation. And, and when you do that as a young coach and you're building, your, I mean, I, we built our own offense. Right. Completely built it. So did we, 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 and, we, we, if you saw our offense, you'd say, Oh, you know, and we used to run the swing and we used to run blocker mover and we used to run those things. Cause we're Wisconsin. Obviously that's huge there, <laughs> but, but we run, we run, we don't run the read and react, but we run the read and react. We don't run the dribble drive, but we run the dribble drive. We yep. have pieces of this that work for mm -hmm. our kids. So um, same here. Yep. Yeah, and and next year's team will probably run something similar to this year's team. But two years from now, I can tell you right now, we're going to be very guard heavy. Is yep. we're going to tweak it again because this will work here and this won't. So I love that because you're making them players. We have, yeah. I mean, and so we took our motion principles. We run some Jay Wright Villanova stuff. Yeah. Um, and it was a ball screen motion, but we took some of that ball screen action. We add, uh, you know, if we wanted to, we could put in a language for flex or we could put in a language for um, flare screens or, um, you know, we, we would control that based upon what initial action that, that would be. What, um, all right, next one. What's the, what's the hardest concept to teach? Um, I think the hardest concept to teach for us um, especially when you're starting out is, is teaching them the complete game. Um, I think on the female side, um, because, and I would say females and males, there's not a lot of people that sit, sit down and watch college basketball or, 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 or pro basketball anymore. Um, and so understanding what, what, uh, specific actions are like, what is a flare screen? What is a slip or a curl? Um, you know, what is a, a back screen or, a UCLA screen. They don't know that. And so concepts like that, you've got to break. They're watching, they're watching highlights. That's yeah. what they're watching on YouTube. Yes. At least boys yeah. are. Or, yeah. or they're watching one-on-one -on -one moves. I mean, boys yeah. are watching, Hey, how did Kobe cross over and, and make that guy fall? Right. And, and that's all they care about. But um, teaching the concepts of how, and, and like you said, read and react is the hardest thing. Like how to read the defense. That's huge. That's the, I would say if, if I would say for girls basketball, the hardest thing to teach is how to read what they're doing, not what we're doing. Okay. So I love Rick. I've had Rick on my podcast a ton of times. He is truly an innovator, truly an innovator. Mm -hmm. It's like 500 hours to run his read and react. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've got it down to 30 minutes. I think I can do it in 30 minutes. I just did a, I just did kind of a semi course because it's too, I always kid, I always kid him when I talk to him, I go, is that layer 72 or is that layer 97 right yeah. it's like my guys can't remember two layers what are you talking about like um so it's like keeping it's the kiss method um is what i what i think um what's one thing one thing you've learned in the last week 
Uh, well, I think I think everything is probably extended over the last farther than the last week is that um, with COVID, we've had to build kind of a, a virtual off season per se, <laughs> and uh, and as you evolve in practice and stuff like that in off season, you can't stay stagnant now that we're not even in the, in the gym. And so you better keep moving. You what are you keep... doing on a side note? What are you doing for Are you running any youth camps this summer? Well, no. Um, and here's why. Um, we usually run a youth camp right as, as after graduation. We That's what we do too. Yeah. Yep. We run a youth camp and we do second grade or first grade all the way up to seventh. And yep. um, it's a big fundraiser for us too. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Yep. Sounds yep. similar. Yeah. And so, and we bring in, um, you know, a bunch of businesses. We have about probably 15 sponsors, and we can't do that right now. Um, we can't ask those businesses to sponsor one because of the economy. That's not fair right. to our community. Um, two, it's hard to ask those parents to make those payments as well. Yep. And so um, this summer, no. The answer is no. I think when we get back to school and have some. We're, so, so we're not either. The reason I ask is because my phone binged here. Um, I sent out an email last night because I basically canceled ours because we're mm -hmm. on, if you've read anything about Wisconsin, we're, we're not on a stay-at-home order, but where yeah. I live in mm -hmm. Milwaukee, we yeah. are. And yeah. we will be till July. Um, mm -hmm. The two big cities at least will be. Um, but anyway, I'm not going to put my kids, I'm not going to put my staff, I'm not, we're not going into a gym. Sorry. Yeah. So I sent out an email yesterday. That's why I asked. And I said, Hey, here's what I'm going to do. I want to do a virtual one. Um, well, I'll, you know, I'll put some stuff up. I'll check in with your kids. Are you interested? And I'm getting about 50, 50. Cause I think they want something for their kids to do. I really do. So um, we built, we built a virtual program. Um, and it's, we have, um, we have, we kind of go on like an eight block off season. And yeah. so, some of those things like we do, like obviously your skill, ball handling, fundamentals, yep. and, and form shooting and all that. And one of the things we did was competitive drills. That's on the end. We want to be competitive. Well, that's why we're in the gym. And so we had to be, we had to be really creative. Um, we stole an app, not stole, but we, we utilize an app um, called Home Court that our kids yep. do for the competitive because it's time and score. Yep. Um, those are, Home Court's great. Yeah. It's yeah. phenomenal. And, yep. and so our kids are really bought into that. That's just like one small piece of it. But the good, you know, I always try to look at the glass half full with some of this stuff. This sucks. We can't be, we can't be in the gym building our athletes the way we intended to. Um, that personal relationship part, if you're relationship driven, is very hard because you're not face to face. And so you've got to find ways outside of that. But this is, we've extended this all the way down into our youth club. And so like they get a sneak peek of what we're doing in our program. So those ones that are in our youth club teams, get to see what we're doing and so it's not like it's not like we're um not um even though we're not getting to the camp we're still getting stuff down to our younger kids okay yeah that's the key is what i think is the key is to get them something to do um especially in the off season um all right so i'm gonna give go through my rapid fire here i'll add a couple of these but um so i'll just ask you a question usually it's a it's pretty i call it rapid fire because their answers are pretty quick tend to be um, okay. Unless I jump in and then they tend to be longer. Uh, what's your favorite brand of basketball? The ball you play with, the round ball. Usually uh, the reason I say that is because I say brand of basketball and people go, I'm fast break, I'm slow yeah. down. And it's like you know, the actual ball. What's your favorite ball, basketball? Did you guys have to go to the new uh, basketball this year, the orange? No, we used we used uh, Spalding TK thousand or whatever it is. Uh, or... We used to use the waves. The wave is my favorite form of basketball. Okay, that's what uh, I think it's Wilson. Wilson. That's Wilson. Now it's somebody Wilson. just changed, right? Like the NBA. We did. The we NBA. Did. We had to go off to oh, what's it called? It's like it's like like what we used to play with in out in the yard. It's like bright orange. Really. And, can't remember what it is. So, Ar but... so the Arkansas State Association must have gotten a good kickback from these people. Somebody made some money. Yeah. Somebody made some money. I'm <laughs> telling you, whenever they change yeah. a ball, somebody's yeah. paying somebody. I'm yeah, telling some, you. Some company got. Uh, well, I know that our provider that provides most of our equipment, they they made a good chunk of money. Off yeah, somebody does because everyone needs to buy a new one. Um, what's one word to describe your ideal player? Tough. Okay. Uh, if you go to one sporting event in the world, what would it be and why? Uh. Wow. It's tough. Just any sporting event? Anything. March Madness. 
um, going to the local. I wouldn't even say probably the final four. Oh, the final. I took my son to the final four, and I hadn't bet in like 20 years. It was awesome to see yeah. Virginia win it and stuff. It was awesome. Yeah, I would go to that just because it's a you, spectacle. Can game, yeah. you can watch game after game after game and be right in. I think that would be – you know, they did in Oklahoma City, I think, last year. And, uh, um, you know, it was right down the road from us. And so, but it's okay. – um, that would be it. Uh, do you have a superstition? I'm not really a superstitious guy. I, I, I mean, I'm a baseball guy, really, but I'm not. I'm not, not no. Baseball guys are the most superstitious know, of all. I know. I, know. Um, I, I take that back. This year, when we were in our our uh, regional tournament, it was funny because I'm usually not, and um, our bus was full. Our cheer had to go with cheer had to go with our girls down to the, the regional tournament, and and me and my assistant. And my intern and our athletic trainer rode in the truck. Well, we won. We had to win two games to get into the regional. And so we all rode down in the truck. Well, then we won that day. And so the next day we turned around, we had to play again. And so we're all getting on the bus, and there was room that time. And I said, uh uh, we're all riding in the vehicle again, cool. I'm not changing anything. So I, I don't want to lie. I, 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 I tell the story of Eaton, like, in my first run at the state tournament, I think I I had the, – the first game of the season, I had, like, a number three at McDonald's. Um, <laughs> and we were undefeated until the state championship every day. Every I game I had. I'm a creature of habit, too. So maybe more than a superstition, but creature of habit. Well, and I tell people – I they the, the boys say, coach is super – because I have to, like, to be – I have to be the last one on the bus. There's some things I do. But I said, it's not about – I if I don't do it, we're going to lose. Yeah. It's more about – life it's about the ritual like yeah, we're getting ready yeah. to play why mm -hmm. do i have you wear a tie to the to the day oh. of the game because i want you thinking about it yeah. um, like it's more about have, that ritual I have, a, I have to have um um cinnamon gum before game like it's oh. a yeah, oh, well, if well, i don't have cinnamon it's just if it's if it's mint i'm, I'm out like see, i have i have to have gums it, it keeps me from yelling at the officials more <laughs> that's why i put it in uh, and then it will fall out once in a while i'll pick it up put it back in the student body loves that they go, coach. That was disgusting. Yeah. I go, Cinnamon gum or cough drops is yeah. usually what my go-to. <laughs> I don't know. I used to do that with the gum. I don't know with this COVID thing if I put it back in my mouth. <laughs> in the old days, I would. Um, one skill not being taught in today's game. Um, one skill, uh, probably mid-range, mid-range jumper. I, I told my son. I said, "Man, there's a golden nugget there in college if you can get a mid-range because it's open." <laughs> mid, mid range everybody's high on free throws and layups um yeah. excuse me three points and layups three point line and layups so i think that mid range is a whole golden gem for some coaches out there it's, it's open it's, it's open yep well i mean like there's one team in our league that like we we stat up you know we do a lot of statistic stuff in scout but um you know if i'm doing a shot chart on on an opposing team we'll take about five or six games before we play them and most of our teams are in the paint or on the three-point arc. And so, so there's one team that just lives and dies by that 15-footer, and they're good. I mean, they're all good. And um, and it's, it's the style that in which they play. But he's an old-school guy. Like he's he, he just retired. But he'd been coaching for 30 years. And so it just shows you that the game's evolved, but he hasn't, and they're still very successful around that. Mid right, and the thing is, it's open. Like those shot, he's probably getting. If you can, I mean, Michael Jordan made a career on mid range and bank well, shots. Closer, closer you get to the basket, the easier the shots are. I mean, right. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, that's a lost. That's a lost art. It is. Um, one thing you do to relax. Um, I'm a spiritual guy. You know, I I, I enjoy a church guy. Um, spending time. You know doing that so that's that's one way i'm a big fisherman i love to fish um i used to one. fish before i started coaching yeah <laughs> i used to fish I, I have i have you know we break our calendar up into a six season calendar i have and i i say it's eight because i go off season preseason in season off season preseason in season fishing season you know yeah. <laughs> so we, we kind of um it's got to be hot in Arkansas in the summer, though. It is. When you get to August, it gets a little bit. It gets a little bit. We kind of – we're right in the middle, so you, you get all four seasons really you well. You do. That's nice. That's nice. Um, uh, one coaching technique um, – no, no, I did that. Uh, best basketball player of all time? Easy. Michael Jordan. The best basketball player you've seen in person? In person? Um, 
in person, probably Joe Johnson. I watched Joe Johnson play when he was in um, high school down at Little Rock. Phenomenal. Okay. Uh, best game you've seen in person? Best game? Uh, that's tough. Um, we had a team, we had a team in our conference. I was, we were, we were at a conference tournament. Now this is, I mean, I could probably go with college or whatever, but I had a team, they were down 28 in, in two and a half quarters, down 28 and came back and won. You remember those, I'm telling you. Oh, you, you don't forget yeah. them. I mean, and it was one of those things. It was like, it was, it was climatic. It was like a, I mean, it was like a scene from a movie. I, know. I mean, when it, it was, and, and that was to punch their ticket to go to the next round. It was phenomenal. You never forget those. Um, one word to describe your coaching style. Flexible. Okay. Um, best coach of all time. I'm a big, I mean, I, I think Shusevsky at Duke is, is probably obviously going to, I think that that's who I would look at. I mean, but there's so many good ones. There's there are. So it is. It's. It, it, it. This is one of the harder questions I normally ask. There's so many. I mean, I can. I can name. I can name so many. You can go pop. You can go pop. You can go yes. Woods. I mean, you know, like pop. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I'm a big Jay Wright fan. I, think I know. We, I mean, there's uh, lots of them. Trust me. Tons. Uh, one book you'd recommend? Would you? Would you use the one you were talking yeah, about? Yeah, I'd use that one. Burn your goals. I think. Um, that's a phenomenal book. If you haven't read that, it'll change the way you, it'll change the way you look at things. Okay. And then this is always the last question of the podcast is what would you tell a young coach or your younger self? If you could have a time machine and go back, what would you, what would you say? What would you say to yourself 10 years ago? Or what would you say to a young coach that's listening to this? Enjoy the process. I think that's number one, um, because it is, it's a process. Um, very rarely do we will we land in situations where it's already established and right. regard, regard, and if it is you're following a legend which isn't going to yeah. be easy either yeah, yeah. no yeah. no and so just enjoy the process enjoy the moments because those are what's going to make the year fun um, have that fire um, that you do for everything have it in practice every day um, build your culture build your brand. Yeah, you know, your kids and and not just you, your kids need to know that. Um, it's the memories. I'm telling you, it's the memories. It's. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've won. We we. I mean, we've been to state tournament ten. I don't even ten times and won three state. I mean, we've been there, but it's the memories. It's the things. Mm -hmm. that, you know, it's the bus rides. It, yeah. You know, it's all those memories, and that's what you I. No, we were we were down at state finals with the boys, and I was the head girls coach at the time. It was my first year, but it was that first class that I had here. And the boys coach, he said, hey, I could really use you if you would, I would like to bring you if you wouldn't mind sitting on the bench. And I said, sure. You know, I mean, these were my kids. I had right. them. Um, he only had a two man staff at the time could use the help. And, um, and so I, we get down there and I just remember telling him, like, dude, just take it all in. Like, th this is hard. It's there's so many things that go into a state title run that have to go right. My best my best team didn't win it. My best team didn't win it. I've, it didn't. It had three Mr. Basketballs. It had an NBA guy. My best team didn't win it. Yeah. Well, stars have to align perfectly. Mm -hmm. Got to stay healthy. You know, look at Virginia basketball. last year. Virginia won a couple games that they shouldn't have won. Mm -hmm. And they were a really, really, really good team. Very good, yes. <laughs> but Very, the, but the stars aligned perfectly team. for them that year. You know, Other than Texas Tech, probably the best defensive team in it. Yeah. I mean, so it's like, that's what that, so I, yeah, I always tell people take those, take those visual pictures mm -hmm. um, and every, those are the memories the you know, the birth of your child, like, mm -hmm. you know, the day you met your wife, all those things, those are memories. Those are, that's what you're going to remember. And I think you're right about the process coach. All right. So you didn't, we didn't break the record as far as length goes. Cause I think the length, <laughs> the record's like three hours, but we're, we're, we're in that good category. So I really do appreciate you taking time out to do this. This was great. It's, it's A lot of cold fun. nuggets. It's been fun. I, I hope to hope to get to do it again. I'd love to love talk. I know we didn't get to X's and O's part. We'll get to X's and O's. I'll put you on the list. That's, that's always fun. Stuff. So. Yeah, we'll do that. Awesome. All right. Hold on coach. Um, I got to stop my recording here.
Hey coach, um, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I love walking in my empty gym here with my shooting machine in the background. Uh, let me know how I can help, subscribe and like. If you're looking to take your coaching to the next level, if you're looking to maybe put some of these pictures on the wall, let me help you. Go over and check out teachhoops.com for coaches who wanna get better. Thanks for watching.